be mixing it up a little bit again because today we're going to be following Flo Jo's Boutique's Fancy Pants Knicker Making Kit. I'm really excited about this because I actually got this ages ago and I started it but it never really it never really happened. <laughs> so I thought I would take you guys through the process, show you how to do it, where to get it from and how easy it is to make. If you guys ever wanted to do it yourself, if you sort of wanted to get back into sewing and you wanted like a little project, if you wanted to make little gifts for your friends, then this could be really fun. So let's get started. So the kit comes with a paper pattern and it's got all your instructions here. You then get cotton fabric inside and there are so many variations of cotton fabrics that it comes with, but this is a very cute little vintage flower posy one. So I really liked that one. Um, you also get a cotton gusset. So that has been pre-cut for you. Um, you get some beautiful elastic to put around the edges. And then you also get a little bow. So to get started, as you can see, there are loads of different lines and these are your size guides. So it goes from sizes eight to 18. So pick your size and we will get cutting the fabric out. So we've got all of our pattern pieces cut to the right size. So now we're gonna start pinning together our pieces. Oops, get rid of the gusset. So the bottom of this piece, is here, the bottom. <laughs> um, so we want to pin that bit to this bit. It says to just pop your right sides facing together. I'm going to go ahead and do a French seam because I think it looks much prettier um, instead of just having like an edge showing once you've sewn. So to do a French seam, instead of placing right sides together, you want to do opposite sides. And you want to create a really thin seam. When you've got your presser foot, I literally go to the edge of my presser foot, and then you trim away excess fabric, obviously not cutting away the stitch line, turn it over, and then do that again next to the presser foot and then you've got a really concealed um, seam which looks really pretty and you don't have to worry about raw edges plus it's really secure as well. So let's get started. We're going to pop opposite sides together but we're also going to try and slip our gusset in. It's easier to pin because the jersey is a little bit slippy than go for it, um, but it's quite a short seam so I'm not going to bother. There we go, you got your nice seam there and then we're just going to go ahead and trim that so that there's less fabric inside the French seam. So it doesn't sort of like bulk out or is difficult to work with. It's just very nice. Right, so again, we're only going to go to the end of the presser foot with our fabric instead of using our seam allowance guide here because we don't want to shave off any more fabric than we need to. So I'm just pressing that with my fingers so that the seam is like on top when I'm pressing it down. And cotton is just so lovely and easy to work with, so it literally just needs the heat from your hand and can be pressed down. So again, let's go ahead and pop another little seam. All right, here we go, a nice thin seam. Do a reverse stitch just to make sure it's nice and secure. towards the end as well. Voila! 
like that. And then we've got a nice clean stitch on both sides. So now that we've got our pieces all together, what you're going to want to do is go around all of your edges, absolutely every single one, with a zigzag stitch. Make sure that this isn't just falling around, you want to pin it down maybe, so when you're going around it looks nice and neat and it's not sort of crooked or... side note I've been going round one way for the majority of it but because I don't want the gusset sort of puckering up in the opposite direction I've started sorry I stopped here and now I'm starting at the top here of the gusset and continuing all the way down so that the sewing direction on both sides of the gusset is going down so like I said before it doesn't end up being ski whiff or puckering or anything like that. So now you've got your knickers ready, turn it over and we're going to be working on the top and we're going to be attaching our elastic. So to do this you want to place it so that it's facing upwards and you're going to be zigzag stitching all the way round. Let's get myself sorted, eh? So start at one corner. Pop it down like that. And then whilst you're working around, still with the zigzag stitch on, so you're using that zigzag stitch as a guide, as you're going round, you're going to be pulling your elastic and then afterwards it will create a gather and I'll show you that in a minute once I've done all of this. done the elastic around all the edges we haven't done the connecting corners because those are going to be connected and you'll just end up puckering them it'll be too thick so that is what we've got now you can start seeing that it looks like a pair of knickers <laughs> I don't know so let's join these corners up with a French seam <laughs> a little pair of knickers. <laughs> They're really cute. They're really cute. Um, and then they also get given a little bow as well. What I love is that they've taken really pretty colours and then they've matched them. So you've got the pink on the frill and then the blue in the ribbon. So I'm just gonna hand stitch this because the sewing machine will probably struggle with this. But it's a really sweet kit. I hope you guys check their website out because they have so many amazing patterns and kits. And, you know, depending on what stage of sewing skills you have, they've got something for everyone. So definitely give them a go. Really, really lovely stuff. And I'm going to go ahead and hand stitch this. These are the finished knickers. 